Hey guys, so today we are answering the subscriber question, Frederick, what are the golden rules of programming in JavaScript? So let's get into it. Well, now the naysayers out there and uh, my personal friend Mark is going to say, hey, there are no golden rules for programming in JavaScript or, well, use as much jQuery as possible or fuck up the code base or something like that. I can I can I can't really manifest a, manifest a good comeback for this statement, but I know he has one and he's probably going to reach out and give me that because he loves bash talking JavaScript and who doesn't love to bash talk JavaScript. But on a more serious side, so the all I can give you for like when I'm talking about JavaScript, like I'll give, I'll, I'll st say two things before we actually get into the rules. The first thing is that you may have heard that like there because there are quite a few naysayers around JavaScript out there, and there is a point to some of the statements. I mean, some of it is kind of like just unfair, I would say, but JavaScript has probably the worst ecosystem in the world when it comes to good practices and adopting good structure it is very much still the wild west i remember my when i first started programming my teacher said the same thing like the the javascript basically was the wild west and i will say that it it it, it pretty much is true to many to, to an extent i'm trying i'm honest to god guys i'm trying to help you to uh, help you so that in turn i hopefully can give something back to the community community i mean I, I, I'm not a master of JavaScript, but I'd like to think that I've learned enough now to be able to give you some good practices that at least has helped me and my team and my previous jobs and so forth write better software. And hopefully it will be helpful to you, but that's number one. The second thing is that uh, JavaScript has a, uh, a very diverse ecosystem, which means that the, the it's... Uh, Honestly, I think that JavaScript right now is just a big free-for-all. Everybody's trying to f establish some, like we're basically in the process of trying to establish the best practices, to try to establish good form and these golden rules, if you will. And that's why everybody's on the platform because it's, a, it's such a diverse ecosystem. I mean, in, in essence, I mean, the functional programmers are trying to push their thing, the object-oriented programmers are pushing their thing, and then you have the people who are using a tool for absolutely everything, or a library, or things like that. And then you have the people who are coming in from another direction, who transpile their real language into JavaScript, and, you know, there's all these different groups who are trying to establish best practices. So I will just give you the very most simplest and well, for hopefully the most useful golden rules for JavaScript to you. So first and foremost, I want you to uh, understand that there's two ways of thinking about JavaScript. And one is for using Node and one is for using it in the browser. And the best thing for you is to understand the differences and that the there is actually different considerations that you have to make in order to make a sustainable project depending on where you are. An example that I see quite a lot is that uh, people are very inclined in JavaScript to add a lot of libraries and use a lot of dependencies and to tools in order to enhance their own workflow. And that might be okay if you're using something like Node, where on the server it doesn't really matter how much stuff you have, but it's very odd in my world, and I think it's fairly bad form, to complicate your application and add a lot of overhead libraries and so forth that really only help you get things a little bit more convenient when you work and then use that in the browser because what's basically happening is that you're in you're actually making a worse product product so that is the first rule i will say and that it is true to for node as well but it's even more important on the client if you do front-end work or ui work Keep it simple, stupid. Try to use as little as possible and only depend on the things that you find to be truly stable. Because as I said, it's a very diverse ecosystem. Everything is changing over and over and over again. I don't know, I, I can't, like, honestly, even in my own projects at work, I can't even keep track of all the libraries my different coworkers are putting into the project. All I know is what the results are. And the results are actually that, all right, it gives them help with that little thing that they are doing right now and saves them maybe a few minutes. And in return, our users suffer and our build processes take longer because, hey, we're running everything for web Webpack, right? And that just takes longer and longer because we have more and more code. The more code you have, 
the, the more problems you usually get. So number one, keep it simple, keep it small. Second thing that you should consider is the lifespan, like the life, the state of your application or the company that you are building. A lot of people ask me about, say, TypeScript. Now, my general rule of thumb here is that if you are working at on a very small project or small-ish project in the beginning of things, that's one of the best times where I really think where I think JavaScript is a really good choice in just in general, where you can iterate very quickly, you can work very quickly. It's a loosely typed language, and you know you can get a very gratifying workflow if you know your tools and when you get up to a certain size in other words when you want to add more people onto the project I highly urge you to start considering TypeScript because the type system is going to help you mitigate a lot of the issues that come when you have a really big JavaScript project a lot of the people who have issues with JavaScript especially from the old days, are used to working with jQuery and everything in the browser and having the DOM and all this nastiness that comes with having a loosely typed language and this global environment, which is like a bit, I'm going to be honest, it's a bit of a hassle if you don't, if you, unless you are like a true master of the browser and JavaScript in general. But TypeScript will, TypeScript will help you a lot. So I, I, I personally think TypeScript is a amazing language. I actually believe that it is probably one of the cornerstones that is required in order to make a successful enterprise level application with JavaScript. That's just me. It can be done without it, but it helps a lot when you have a lot of developers. So that's number two. Use TypeScript when you do large scale uh, development. It will help you a lot. And the last tip I'm going to give, the last golden rule I will give you is to consider be, uh, consider your use case for like for what you're doing basically in other words you have most likely several different coworkers and they all have different like experience levels and they have they come from all you may have juniors you may have seniors you may have back-end developers who are really into uh, or like doesn't they don't care about javascript and you have front-end developers who are really into javascript so before you pick a tool or you decide to opt into a solution like uh, what, I, I'll give you an example, Storybook. Some people swear by Storybook, they absolutely love Storybook. I have so far always found the same thing happen, the, the same thing has happened at my past two jobs. Same thing, without fail. So everybody gets excited about it, they use it and use it and use it and use it, and then they stop using it. Because they, for some reason, it just is more convenient the one time to work in the actual product instead of using Storybook and some people don't care about storybooks, some do, and a lot of the value of this component library, apart from it being a local development environment, uh, it, it's kind of lost unless you actually use it consistently. So you have to know, you, you have to get a feel for the sort of people that you are working with. How likely are you to actually maintain a complicated storybook with a lot of different components, as an example? Or is it likely that your amazing functional programming library that does very sophisticated things is going to be used by a lot of people? I mean, I've seen this quite a lot where the front-end gurus or the people who, you know, who believe themselves to be, well, above the curve, let's call them above the curve in JavaScript, they opt in for solutions to problems that they can solve without having to actually use that tool. And then they convince themselves that this is going to bring a lot of benefit, when in reality, all they actually did was to add a, lot, a little bit of extra weight to the project for a very, very slim value. And often it just becomes legacy as soon as they stop using it or something new and shiny comes along. And that's why I think that it's very important for you to really think about, like that, that is one of the most important things, really think about your use case. Don't add a bunch, like don't add a library unless you are 100% sure that it's going to save you a lot of hassle. And if you really come down to it, I mean, after a few, after well, the years I've been working, I've come down to that. I think I, I can count, like I have three or four dependencies when I do front-end work or like real like JavaScript work that I come back to that I actually need because it would take me too long to build them from scratch. But all of these other trends, like there's a million libraries that I don't even care about. And my company is just, uh, you know, doing just as well as anybody, any, uh, all the companies who are using these tools. So what I want you to take away from this is that 
first and foremost, re remember if you like if you are doing development in JavaScript, the like, first rule is to know like which which context are you in. In other words, if you're doing server side work. Uh, you have a little bit more leeway with your dependencies and you I mean you can opt in for a better development experience. But always consider that way off. The less stuff you have, the better, because the more code you have and the more tools you have and so forth, the odds are like, it's much more likely that you're going to slow down your own process, create issues or compatibility problems and create a worse experience for your users. Things of this nature, so you know, keep it simple, stupid. Try to keep it as small as possible. Second rule is to Make sure that you have a well, a good understanding of where you are in your development process, like in your company lifespan. If you are a very small company, it's great to just use JavaScript as is. But when you get up to a little bit of scale, try to opt in for TypeScript because the type system will help you a lot for large scale system development when you have, I mean, more than four or five developers working on the project. It, it's going to help you. That's like, at least what I've found. And lastly, really think about the stuff that you are adding into your project because odds are that you are adding dependencies more because you think that you need them rather than they're actually going to produce value. And only you know your own coworkers. Ask yourself, am I going to be the only person using this or are everybody going to use this? Am I going to go into a meeting and ask, hey guys, are you going to use this? And are they just going to sit there and say, yeah, sure, of course we're going to use it. And then in two weeks, they don't even use it anymore. Really know your coworkers, know your work environment before you opt into these tools, because often you will find that less is more. Have a great day.